Good morning, everyone. It's Rose Coleman coming to you live from my craft room here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It is a Friday, September 15th. I'm super excited to join you this morning with my weekly Funfold Friday card, and I always love to use my product of the week. I usually feature a stamp set or a bundle or sometimes an entire suite if it's available. I would love to join you live Monday to Friday at 9 a.m. It gets my day off on the very best start. <laughs> um, and today is Friday, so we're gonna get into this one. I'm so excited. Um, we're gonna use some paper that doesn't exactly scream fall, but I'm gonna show you how it can be fall. And we're gonna make a fun fold card. Good morning, Leanne from Red Deer. Good morning, everybody that's popping on. Hi, TJ. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, hello. I wanna say a huge thank you to those of you who have already responded to my email that I sent out last night about my fundraiser for Ron McDonald House Charities. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so excited to do this. And I am so grateful for all of you. Um, I have a number of kits that I will be bringing with me. I have one right here um, tomorrow at the Dalhousie Community Center. Uh, we will be there from 10.30 to 2. You can come by and shop for my hand stamp cards. They're going to be $5 each. All of that money goes towards the charity that I am supporting. As well as I have some other kits that I have from Stampin' Up. We can, uh, we can go ahead and purchase kits and have them available, right? Um, so I'm going to have a few there. First come, first serve. Basically, this is my Christmas card kit that sells for $35. 15 of that goes towards the charity. So every kit you buy is uh, $15. is going to go to Ronald McDonald House Charity here in Alberta. Um, the Children's Hospital, uh, the Ronald McDonald House is situated next to the Children's Hospital. This is, a, I'm sure you've all heard about Ronald McDonald House. These charities are amazing, you guys. They support families who have sick children and nothing pulls at my heartstrings more than a sick child, right? Like it's just such a, a terrible, terrible thing to go through. And I want to support those families by supporting Ronald McDonald House. And um, these kits will be yours. You'll be able to, to um, make 10 cards and there'll be some supplies left over. I'm giving you the ribbon, the bling, um, half of the memories and more kits. Um, cards and the cards to go on top. I'll have samples there tomorrow for you guys to take a look at and snap pictures. Um, lots and lots of fun things, you guys. I'm so excited to support this worthwhile cause. And you saw my t-shirt. <laughs> if you didn't check it, if you didn't see it, I did do a video, a quick video over on my Instagram page um, showcasing the kit and my t-shirt. On the back, it says Stamping for Kids. My team and I, this is going to be an ongoing initiative, not just a one-time thing, right? Uh, we will gather probably several times throughout the year and we will stamp for kids. So I'm so excited. Thank you for sharing my, letting me share something that's near and dear to my heart. And thank you for your support. Um, if you live in Canada and you want one of these kits, guys, let me know. I'll be happy to send one out. It's just $5 for postage, okay? <laughs> Mary says, can you move to the US? Yes, I'd love to move to the US, Mary. Um, if my husband got a job and we got transferred, we could be there. But however, I don't think I could work right away, right? I don't I think there's you there's laws that I would have to um that's okay though. We could probably stamp together until I could I'm able to work. I don't know. <laughs> but it is a dream of mine to move south. I do not like the cold. I'd love to be in a warmer place, absolutely. So you never know. You never know. Um the future is wide open, right? You never know where I'm going to go. No. For now, I'm in Canada and there's no sight, nothing on the horizon of us moving to the U.S. But um, thank you all. I have met so many wonderful people from the United States and I love that you join me. <laughs> Jen says I would miss you. Yeah, Jen, no worries. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, but I do love all of my American people that watch me and I, I'm grateful for you all. Um, so if you live in Canada and you want one of these kits, it's an extra $5 for postage. It will come in a package like this. And I took the kit. I actually took this kit, physically took it to the post office and asked, how much will it cost to mail this? And it's $5, okay? So if you want one of these, it's $40 and you can e-transfer me at rosecoleman at shaw.ca or message me and I can let you know. Now those kits won't go out till Monday because I've expedited an order um, of some more kits. And um, so I wanna have the ones that I have right now. Um, 
to go tomorrow, right? I want to show because I could probably sell all of these online today and not have nothing tomorrow. And I don't want that. I want people to come and join me over at the Dalhousie Community Center here in Calgary and uh, just hang out. Come and shop for my cards. Come pick up your kit. Come and say hello. Come and grab a mini catalog if you don't have one. Um, let me try and read my comments. Uh, will there be first thing tomorrow? Save me one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there. Okay, TJ, I am looking forward to meeting you. TJ joins me here just about every morning. And let me share with you guys, TJ is on my Excited Canadians team. And she lives all the way up in Red Deer, which is about an hour away from me. And I've never met her yet in person, right? I feel like I know you to pieces, TJ, but I'm so excited to actually meet you face to face tomorrow. So such a lovely thing um, to have team members all across Canada and then to be able to meet them in person. So fun. All right, let's get started. I'm super excited. Oh, one more thing. Thank you for all the birthday wishes for my daughter yesterday. We had a great afternoon slash evening together. She's such a sweetheart, you guys. I am so grateful for her. So grateful. Um, and thank you for the birthday wishes. She's 18, legally, legally an adult. And uh, I'm super happy, super happy to watch her go into adulthood and see what the is on her horizons, right? Okay, let's get started. We're gonna get started on this fun fold card. And let's see here. Hello, hello, everybody that's popping in. I appreciate you all so much. <laughs> Great day tomorrow, Krista says, yes. <laughs> Joyce says, oh, I wish I could. Good morning from sunny Cornwall, Ontario. You can still participate anywhere across Canada. You can still help me support this fundraiser. Now, if you bought kits from me in August, don't forget those, the 25% commission from my kits from the kits sale in August, not the kit sale, but you, any, yeah, the kits were on sale up to 30% off. If you've purchased a kit using my host code in August, I have put that money aside. That's going with my my fundraising efforts too for Ronald McDonald Host Charity. So I want to thank you all for supporting me. You guys know who you are. If you've supported me and you're going to come out tomorrow, I thank you all. Or you're reaching out to me. That means the world to me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. All right, let's get started. We're going to flip the camera. And there's my sunny backyard. We are having great weather these days, you guys. Really nice weather. I can't complain. So grateful. Okay, let's take a look here. Let's move some stuff off to the side. Did you guys see me stamping on my phone yesterday? Oh my goodness, craziness, craziness. If you've got your phone on your desk and you got open ink pads, it's easy to do, right? It's e <laughs> yes, I see the laughing faces going up. It's easy to do. The phone looks like an ink pad, right? So tap, tap on your phone and <laughs> no ink. Anyway, it didn't work. So I just thought I'd share that little fun thing with you. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone that's popping on. Okay, so today's card is called a sidestep card. Okay, and we are going to pull in the pick of the patch. We're going to play with the punch, the matching punch. These, when you purchase them together, you get them 10% off. Don't wait. Don't hesitate on these guys. Um, if you use this host code, I'm going to send you four card kits that you can make from my videos this week. And um, I can't wait to send these off to you and you can have fun making these cards with your own bundle and your own stamps, okay? I will send you the cardstock, the DSP, any embossed pieces, any embellishments. Um, so yeah, if you missed my video yesterday, I was so excited to make these little fun flowers. Whoops. On my card, on my video yesterday, they are three-dimensional. You can fluff them up, but then they flatten down to go into your envelope and then cutie pie on the inside. So we're gonna make a we're gonna make a different card today. Today is gonna be a traditional harvest uh, fall card, and we're gonna pull in this amazing paper again. So yesterday I pulled in this paper, it's called Garden Walk, and um, I'm just gonna flip through it because I did go through it and show you all the patterns yesterday. In case you missed that, you can go back. To yesterday's video and take a close look. I used this pattern here on my card. Really, really awesome paper. Look, there's Christmas with poinsettias. So today we're going to pull in, let me grab those sheets that I'm pulling in. I love this pattern. You get six sheets of each design in this one, okay? So it's awesome. So you're going to have lots and lots of cards, uh, lots of DSP to play with. Yeah, you do. I was just counting. Okay, so I've got three, four, five, and I've already used one for my sample. Now, for this one, I'm not going to use this side, even though it's so pretty, it's killing me to cover it up. I'm actually going to use the wild wheat side. 
And we're also going to bring in the pattern with the small flowers on it. This one right here. So those are the two patterns I've pulled out for my cards today. And then using the color scheme on the back of the card, I know that there is Mossy Meadow in this, this pattern. So we're going to pull in Mossy Meadow for our card base. Now I'm going to cut all of this with you here today. I have Mossy Meadow 8.5 by 5.5. I'm going to, don't worry about writing this down unless you're in a hurry to make this card, but I will try and get this PDF up on my blog today. If not today, then tomorrow morning. Okay, so before I go. So I want to get it out to you before I go to my sale tomorrow. So um, just hang tight with me. I've got 8.5 by 5.5 um, Mossy Meadow. We're going to pop this into the trimmer. I've got the arm extended out here, and we are going to score at three inches. I use my scoring tool. Three inches, six inches. There's three score lines. Six inches and seven inches. All right. So then we're done with that. We're just going to fold up the bottom to make a mountain, fold down the next one to make a valley, and then fold down this one to make another mountain. So there is the uh, structure of the card like that. And it is supposed to be like this on the back. So we've got a little bit of a shorter background, but that's okay. It's gonna help with the standing of this card. And again, when you're de dealing with um, any kind of fun folds, you definitely want to reinforce your score lines very, very crisply. Crisply, is that a word? Crisply, yeah, sure it is. <laughs> um, okay, so I need another piece of white. That's not big enough. I need a piece of white that measures six by three. So I'm gonna grab a full sheet here. And let's see, we're going to cut the cardstock at six inches like that and we're going to turn it and we're going to cut it at three inches and I'm just going to keep on cutting because I need these to send out to my people that have ordered with me this week and use the host code the code that you see right there at the top of my trimmer so six by three and we're going to get three of these out of this sheet six by three and then we're going to score this piece I only need one of them not three but I'll put the other two aside. So we're going to score this piece at one and three quarters. Just one score mark. So one and three quarters. A little score line like that. Okay. So there is my white piece. And then some more things that we need. Some DSP. So this piece here, the floral, the back, it's going to, I'm calling it my background and you'll see why in just a second. It is two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I'm going to pop this into my tr trimmer and I'm going to line it up at five and a quarter like that. And I hold on to all my little pieces because you never know when you want a little tiny strip. Okay. Five and a quarter by two and three quarters. Okay. So there is my first piece of designer series paper. My second piece of designer series paper is going to be this wild wheat one. And you can choose if you want diagonal lines going cross or up and down, horizontal. I'm going to choose to have mine going up and down. So I want to cut this piece at two and three quarters. So we can come in here. It's two and three quarters by four. So actually what I'm going to do is turn it and I'm going to cut the paper at four. So then I have a good size two inch piece for another uh, project. Then I'm going to take this and turn it and I'm going to cut it at two and three quarters. And again, I'll get a couple out of here, two and three quarters by four. Okay. So I'll put all these aside. Now this is what we need. So let me just get my trimmer out of the way. And you can see here's my DSP two and three quarters by four, five and a quarter by two and three quarters. And then what else do we need? We need a piece of cardstock. I have here some wild wheat cardstock. This strip of cardstock here is already cut. It's one and a quarter by five and a quarter. We're gonna use that today as well. So these are the pieces we need here. So we've got our white, we've got our mossy meadow that I've already done and scored. And now we're gonna, oh, I actually need, sorry, one more piece of basic white, the same size as my DSP. This is gonna be the inside where you can um, stamp at, or write your greeting. So let me go ahead and see, is this five and a quarter? Is this five and a quarter? 
no, not quite. So this one, I'm going to make it the same size, which is two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Bringing back my trimmer. All right, five and a quarter, like so, by two and three quarters. All right, so there's my inside piece. And we're going to need some scraps. So these pieces here will be perfect for the scrap that I'm going to need for stamping. Okay, it's all about getting set up. <laughs> All right, so for this card, we're going to go back to the card base and we're going to reinforce the score lines. So I'm going to just bring in my bone folder, score and score, and then I'm going to flip it over and score the back one. And, you know, sometimes it's even helpful to score it back on itself, like score it forward and back, right? The more creases, the, the more you can reinforce your score lines, the better the better it sits on the mantle and it won't flatten out on you. Um, you can never score your cardstock too much. Okay. I know sometimes it's the more of a matter of, oh, I just want to get the card done. <laughs> but it does help to have this um, bit of extra time here. Okay, so there we've got our card scored. We're going to put, first we're going to put the floral DSP layer down. Okay, so that's going to go in here like this. Look how pretty that is love the wild wheat coming through this pattern. I have now fallen in love with wild wheat. <laughs> it is such a great col color for fall and all other times of the year as well. I love that Stampin' Up! put it in this designer series paper so it gives us lots of uh, products to use featuring that color. Okay, so that's going on the background like that. Then this part folds up. Now, We've got our white piece that's going to sit like so. It's going to go like this, and it's going to wrap around the back like that. Okay, that's our sidestep part. So what do we want to do with the other piece of DSP? It's going to go on the front of this white piece. Okay, so right, oh, look how beautiful that is. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could, depending on what kind of card you're making, you could use this pattern, right? With six sheets in a package of DSP, you're getting lots and lots of... Um, lots of uh, designs. I'm missing some of your comments here. Um, <laughs> why would you want to leave beautiful sunny Alberta? Oh no, I don't want to leave sunny Alberta. I'm just saying it's nice. It'd be nice to go away to one of the warmer states in when it's winter. <laughs> winter. I don't like the winter. That's my only be beef is about winter, cold winters. Oh, but I guess we still have lots of fun, lots of things to be grateful for here, here in Alberta, right? Okay, so we got this piece. We've got a piece of um, wild wheat. That's going to go down here on this front step. So we can pull all of. Um, how can U.S. Um, folks, you will have to reach out to a U.S. demonstrator and see if they're offering that. That's, this is just something that I um, am, am offering. So I'm not quite sure about um, in the U.S. what you will do. You could reach out to a demonstrator um, in your area, you just use your zip code and find one close to you, and hopefully that will work out. And you know, all demonstrators do different things. We are independent demonstrators, so we do offer different offerings and different um, classes and such. So this white piece is going to go on the inside, but first I'm just going to focus on the outside right now. So before I put the um, front part on, I'm going to go ahead and attach this piece. But before I attach the wild wheat, I'm going to bring in a ribbon. And this ribbon here is called herringbone. And it's white and super soft. It makes really lovely bows. And I'm going to cut seven inches of this. And I'm just going to grab my ruler. And we're going to snip seven inches. Okay, so in your kit that you'll get from me, you're going to get seven inches of this ribbon and you'll be able to do this. And now I'm going to bring in the stamp set. So the stamp set, the pick of the patch, has these leaves and we are going to stamp right on top of this ribbon. Okay, so we're going to bring in, let's see what colors do we have here. We have wild wheat and calypso coral. And we're going to grab that stamp Grab my chamois so it's close by so I can clean it because we're going to do some alternating stamping across this ribbon. Okay, so I'm going to do Clipsal Coral. And instead of cleaning every single time in between, I'm actually going to space this out and only clean my stamp once. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to stamp with Clipsal Coral right onto the ribbon. I'm going to leave a space 
because I'm going to stamp with wild wheat in the middle. I'm going to try and space these out. Isn't that fun? We can stamp on the ribbon. Have you guys ever done this? Such a fun technique. Okay, so I've got my Calypso Coral. I'm going to take my stamp. I'm going to clean it on my chamois. Then I'm going to go into my wild wheat. And I'm going to add some more leaves. I can turn the stamp to make it look a little different. Because, you know, it's fall and the leaves are blowing in the wind, right? So here's wild wheat. And wild wheat. Look at that stamped ribbon <laughs> so fun so much fun all right so let's see thank you Jen for posting my code thank you thank you thank you she's such a good friend and the garden walk DSP thank you so much you can make apples with the punch you can make flowers like I did yesterday oh my gosh so many fun things okay so let's go ahead and close my ink pads I'm going to take my stamp and clean that up there we go Okay, so now this is going to get wrapped around the front of this piece of um, wild wheat. So I'm going to grab my tear and tape, and we're going to put some of that down. This is a super strong tape, and it's called tear and tape because you can actually just tear it. You don't need to have your scissors. Um, tear it off, stick it down, I'm putting piece on each end like this. And then we're going to just take the ribbon and wrap the ends like that. Super easy. Okay, so I didn't put any glue on the front of this piece, just on the back to anchor it down. Then I'm going to grab my liquid glue and I'll come in here and put some over top of the ribbon, around the middle of the cardstock, and around the edges. And you can be very liberal, <laughs> with, free with your glue on this because it's colored cardstock and it doesn't tend to ripple when you put it on top of. The, the next piece. All right, so let's just got a little bit of a a little bit of a string happening there. Let's snip that off. We don't want that. There, T trying to get away on me. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna fold up the front little lip there, a little fold line, and we're gonna put this right here, and then line it up. Give it a second for the glue to adhere. Then we ha also have this awesome, awesome, awesome Calypso Coral braided trim. Oh, I love this stuff. And this is in the same suite with the um, paper, the uh, Garden Walk paper. So we're just going to use a little four inch strip of this. So you'll have a four inch strip of this in your kit as well when you get your card kits from me. And you can just, I'm just measuring with my ruler, four inches. Okay, so four inches of ribbon, not ribbon, it's braided trim. So I'm going to take that braided trim, going to slip it underneath my herringbone ribbon, and I'm going to just tie a double knot over here. So then I'm just going to take it like that, and then I like to pinch with my fingers at the way I want this to sit. So I'm kind of fussy with this stuff, so I want to have a little bit of a bump there. So I pinched, and then oh, I'm pressing, pulling. And you want to make sure you make a double knot because otherwise it may come loose. So I've got one knot and then I'm just going to make another one. And I think four inches is, is quite enough to make enough to make um, this little knot. There we go. Now we can tighten it. So there we've got a little cinch. Isn't that fun? It's pulling in all the coordinating colors. And then I'm just going to trim off the ends like that. And if you want to, you can keep, hold on to these little pieces because you can actually tear them apart. Like the braided trim is so fun because it does fray and you can do that. Here, I can do it on my sample. Just use my fingernail, my thumbnail, and just making a little bit of fun. There, I'll hold it close so you can see a little bit of fun fraying on there. So there we have it. That's our front piece. So now let's get back to this piece here. So we're going to play with this one. This one is going to you know what, we can go ahead and do this. We're gonna anchor this onto our card now. So I'm gonna put glue on the bottom down here and on the bottom on the back right up here. And I love my liquid glue, so I'm just gonna come in here and put a strip there and a strip up here. And it'll give me a little bit of wiggle room. Now the first things first, I'm gonna take the bottom. I know I want the bottom to be flush with the bottom of the front of the card. I'm gonna slip it under the ribbon and I'm lining it up at the bottom edge of this card, of the front of the card, okay? So now we have 
this anchored down. Now this one's still free at the back. So I'm gonna fold this up. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And my grid paper, I gotta flip it over so I can get the inches. When you use grid paper, it is such a good friend. <laughs> you can stamp on it, you can practice on it, but it has all the measurements. So I'm gonna hold this up here so you can see. At the bottom of my grid paper, I want to put my card and I'm going to fold it and then I'm just gonna fold this down and I wanna make sure that this is not gonna go over the four and a quarter because I want this to, I'm lining this up at the four and a quarter inch mark at the top and then level with the bottom it's because that is the measurements of the card so that it'll still fit in the envelope. I've got five and a half by four and a quarter, okay? So if you didn't measure it, you could all, you could, put it too high, and then when you go to fold it, it'll be too big for your envelope. Okay, so let me just share with you what that looks like. So this is gonna fit in our standard medium envelope like that, okay? But if you didn't do that and you didn't measure, um, this is a very critical part that you make sure that you don't make this too wide because you'd be like, oh darn, it doesn't fit, and then you might have to tear your card apart, and that's not fun. Okay, so there's the basic structure of the card. Now for the front, um, I'm gonna do some stamping. And I have to bring in my Stampin' Cut Emboss machine because I didn't get this piece cut. All right, so we're gonna bring in my Boho Blue. Just open up this platform. And we're gonna put down the gray platform, the clear platform, and I've got an extra one for the top. And what I have here is the Radiating Stitches are an online exclusive set of dies. Let me pull these in and show you what they look like. Radiating Stitches, item code 161595. And you're going to get all of these amazing dies. Love it, love it, love the rectangles. I'm using the smallest rectangle, okay, to cut my layer. So here we go. Let's see. Will this fit? Yes, I found a smaller piece of cardstock. I'm going to put that on here, trim it off my scissors. And then I'm just gonna put it blade pointing up, lay my cardstock on top, line up the top cover plate, do my little yoga stretch. <laughs> okay, let's start that again. Do my little yoga, hold it down with my thumb, put my hands up top, and then we're gonna roll it. Roll it, roll it, roll it. And all that cracking is normal for anyone new and has never seen this little boss. Oh, it's called the mini stamp a cut in a boss and it comes in blue, this light blue, boho blue, folds up, the little sides fold up, and it is perfect. Look, it's like the size of my hand. It literally sits on the corner of my desk because it's so functional. The size never gets in the way. And, you know, everybody needs one of these in our lives, right? <laughs> Even if you have the big boss, the mini boss definitely has its own uses and um, lots and lots of advantages of the little boss. Okay, so here's my die cut. See how it's got the radiating stitches, all the stitches going around? Love it. We're going to grab our silicone, my silicone mat, put that on top. Let's bring in the stamp set. Okay, I did a little stamp surgery. I'm not going to lie. This one here is quite long, and I knew I wanted to put it on this smaller. You see how long that is? It would not fit. So I did a little stamp surgery, and I made a little cut with my scissors, I cut right here. I wanted a harvest and then of blessings. So I have two stamps. So what we're gonna do, we've got them split here on two different blocks. I'm gonna stamp with wild wheat. I'm gonna stamp um, the first part, which is a harvest. So tap, tap, tap on the wild wheat. Stamp that up at the top like that. Then I'm gonna bring in Calypso Coral and we're gonna stamp of blessings underneath. So tap, tap, tap on the clips of coral. And then we're just gonna hover in here and line that up like so. There we have it. So now you see how I have taken what would have been a long skinny greeting and made it into a shorter one. And I can now make it my own, right? Make it the size that I needed it to be. You could also stamp this on a scrap piece of paper and snip it and be able to glue your two pieces together. So whatever you wanna do, it's totally up to you. Okay, so there's my background. And I'm gonna bring in the big pumpkin from the pick of the pet patch the pick of the patch, and we're gonna stamp that with wild wheat on the background here. Love it, okay, and then I've got my little stem, 
Do I? Yes. Okay. I've got my stem. I'm going to stamp that with pecan pie. I got so much stuff on my desk here. Okay. Pecan pie. And we're going to turn this around and stamp it this way. There we go. And I'm going to bring in the coordinating color, Mossy Meadow. And we're going to stamp. I think I'll actually stamp right on the card base for this one. Um, I got a leaf and I'm going to stamp it going off to the side over here. There we go. There's our first pumpkin. Non-traditional color, but it's okay. You know, <laughs> we can go with any color of pumpkin, right? I think we've established that this week. Okay, so there's my background. I want to bring in a piece of card, another smaller piece of cardstock. I'm going to stamp the smaller pumpkin using Calypso Coral. And I'm turning the stamp so that the bumpy part of the stamp goes to the left because that's how it's going to go into my punch. Okay, so you want to make sure you kind of take a look at your stamps and your coordinating punches and make sure you're stamping your things in the right direction. It'll save you a whole bunch of grief of cleaning up scraps <laughs> and your, your uh, small pieces of cardstock will go a lot further. So there's my pumpkin. I'm going to pop that into the punch just like so. And we're gonna just line this up and punch it. There we go. So we've got our pumpkin. And then I have an even skinnier piece of cardstock, scrap cardstock right here. And we're gonna do our stamping and uh, punching of the leaf again. Put one on here. And I'm also gonna stamp, I've got my pecan pie still open. I'm gonna stamp my little stem. Um, sideways because that's how it's positioned in the punch okay all right let's close up these actually I'll leave them open I'll just move them off to the side um okay so let's go ahead and grab look at that how did I get that green ink on there stuff happens look at that <laughs> okay we're not gonna worry about it we're just gonna go ahead it's it's not on the image so whoo punch our leaf there it is and then we're gonna just go ahead and bring this up to the top part of the punch, line up the stem with the where the stem is on the punch and pop that out. So there we have our pieces. Just gonna bring in my glue and add a little tiny dab of glue to the bottom of the stem and put the pumpkin on top like that. And then I'm gonna put the other leaf on this side of the pumpkin. And I got my take your pick tool. I learned last night, my daughter got from my sister, she got one of those tiny houses, ti or not my sister. Um, yes, my sister. My sister bought her um, one of those tiny houses. She's, she loves those little tiny things where you have to put them together. It's like Lego, but like super more complicated and, and, and fine, fine detail stuff, right? I don't know how she has the patience. But anyway, she sat with her friend at the kitchen table last night and she's like, mom, can I have your tool? And I had to run downstairs and get this for her. So it's like, note to self, I think that's a, a Christmas gift that has to go in her stocking this year, I think. <laughs> okay, so if you have people in your life that like to do things, maybe it's not necessarily stamping. This tool is amazing because she had to deal with all those little teeny tiny pieces. If you've ever put together one of those tiny houses, oh my gosh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So she uh, borrowed that last night and I had to re remember to bring it down with me this morning. Otherwise, I'd, I'd be lost without it. So I think everybody needs one of those little tools. All right, so now I'm going to grab my dimensionals. Okay, they're here. Here we are. Okay, so we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of this piece. Four. One, two, three, four. And then we'll pull off all the backing. And we'll put this on the front of the card. Let's bring back the card. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece. I'm actually going to tuck it underneath no, I'm going to do it on top. You could do it underneath, but you'll cover up the pumpkins. So I'm actually going to just hover over my layer here, and I'm just lining it up the top on the sides, and then press that down. There we go. Oh my gosh, I love it. Now, some bling for the front. So I brought in here today, um, these are called iridescent pastel gems. This is what the full package looks like. I've got a couple of extra packages in here, extras from leftover you know, opened packages. Excuse me. I'm going to um, grab these ones here that are kind of orangey and calypso corally 
color. And I'm going to put them up at the top like that. Oops. It doesn't want to come off. Stay. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so those are the bling, and you'll get these in your kit as well. Um, this one is so amazing. I love this card. I love this card style. And you're probably thinking, well, where do you sign? Well, that's what I have this piece for. This is the piece I cut. Is it? Yes. The same size as the designer series paper. Now that's going to go down here on the inside. So then you can go ahead and you can grab your pumpkins and you can stamp more if you're liking the stamping. Well, who doesn't love the stamping, right? <laughs> I'm going to stamp the same colors in the inside on the inside. So let's grab my big one. We're going to stamp with wild wheat. Got some lines on there. Oh, that's okay. Just add some interest. Um, how did I do that? I think that's what happens when you stamp your in your stamp. And it's kind of interesting how that worked out. I think I must have stamped on the edge of a piece of cardstock before or something. But it's okay. We're going with it. Okay, so let's give them a stem. And we'll grab the mossy meadow and do a little leaf on there. We'll put this leaf going this way. There we go. And then we can go ahead and do the small one as well. So clips of coral with the small pumpkin. Put that one right here. And again, the little stem. You can stamp till your heart's content with this stamp set. It is so much fun. I'm gonna put my leaf on the same side. There we go, we've got two matching pumpkins. Okay, so on the front it said Harvest of Blessings. You could say you're the pick of the patch. That would be a good one for the inside. You are the pick of the patch. You could say thanks so much if you're giving a thank you card. This, is what, well, this one's not really Halloween, but I do wanna say pick of the patch. I think that's the good one. All right, let's get that on a block. And I think I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna stamp with um, pecan pie on the inside. You're the pick of the patch. And then I have room at the bottom to sign this card and hopefully put a smile on someone's face. Isn't that fun? I love Thanksgiving cards, fall cards. So beautiful. Such beautiful colors. Okay, so then it folds up like this and like this and it fits in the envelope. And of course, your envelope, I mean, don't send out naked envelopes, right? You want to definitely stamp a pumpkin on the front of your envelope and, you know, do the same thing as you did on the inside of the card. I guarantee that whoever gets this card in the mail will open the envelope first before they open the rest of their bills. <laughs> it's always nice to stamp your envelope. And my friend Cheryl Fox, she loves to, to emboss the back flap. She just takes the flap and put it into the embossing folder, run it through the machine, and every time I get a card and the flap is embossed, I know it's from her, even before I look at the return address. <laughs> so there we have it, my friends. A, a fun and easy um, Fun Fold Friday card. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me just flip you around here. <laughs> I had a blast with this one. And this is another design that can be used for any, gosh, crazy hair day. Um, you can use this design for any any type style, right? It could be birthday, could be Halloween, could be Christmas. And, you know, it's just a fun fold that opens like this, greeting on the inside, and it still fits into a regular envelope. Thank you all for being here. I'll come back and read your comments. Uh, Jen is putting a link for my blog. Thank you. Yeah, it's just my name, rosecoleman.com, you guys, www. Um, I'd love for you to join my email list. Then that way you will never miss out on any of my um, upcoming uh, events, promotions, those types of things. Hi, Laurel. Good morning. <laughs> yes, I've missed some of your comments, but I will come back. And I think my friend Jen has answered some of your questions um, as you posted them. She was watching. Thank you, Jen, for being here and for doing that. Um, I want to wish you guys a great weekend. If you live in the Calgary area and you can come out and visit me and help me support Royal McDonald House. If I run out of kits tomorrow morning, um, I do have more already ordered and they will be here 
I expedited it, so I'm not sure, but I'll let you know. It'll be in the next few days anyway. Um, I thought it was worth, this initiative was worth expediting that order. So um, thank you again for being here. Thank you for all you do to support me in this amazing journey that I am on. And um, God bless and have a great weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.